Yeah, thank you, Mandy. So it is a good morning. It is 17 minutes after 7 o'clock this Tuesday morning, January 28th, 2014. Some huge winter storm coming this way and expected to just miss us. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'll tell you hey. about that in just a bit. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Larry. How you doing over there? Good. Yeah, big yeah. storm coming. It's got a name. I can't remember. Was it Cleo or something? <laughs> yeah. What's the name? I can't remember what they call it. Sure. They're calling a name. I don't remember winter storms getting names. It's, it's something relatively new. and Just the world changes when we're not looking, Robin. Well, job justification, Change. too. <laughs> yeah, there's probably a guy who gets paid. Oh, we need a new name, Henry. Oh, come on. Right. <laughs> don't name it Henry, whatever you do. Yeah. All right, let's see what we're doing this morning. Bring Back of the Bible is the first feature you'll hear at 7.30. It's a two-minute feature with uh, your host, Pastor Walter B. Smith. He's the pastor of Heritage Baptist Church, and he brings us his two-minute feature each weekday morning. Yeah. Bill Blackwire is coming on at 7.35. He is the president and CEO of Bethany Christian Services. He wants to tell us how the Child Welfare Agency is committed to protecting vulnerable children by working with government in developing nations to eliminate child trafficking. Yeah. It's an important thing. By the way, the Super, Super Bowl, the World Cup, uh, Olympics, a lot of those big things are wonderful to look at and think about, but they also happen to be magnets for this terrible thing of child prostitution and sex trafficking. So Yeah. For some reason. Uh, news Bites at 835. Well, you say it that way, it doesn't sound good. News Bites. It's News Bites, not News Bites. News bites. We take news the bites. news from around the world and we shorten it and abbreviate it. What do you got? Some mess over there? No, it's just somebody drew on the calendar. Somebody drew on the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so uh, we will bring the news to you at eight thirty-five. We'll shorten the news, obviously. Uh, Nine oh five. You've got a garden. Caroline Baldwin will be in the studio bringing you her uh, information, her advice about your garden, your lawn, and. Uh, sad post from Caroline yesterday. Her dog died, and just yeah. so, always sad. You saw that? Yeah. yeah, I did. It was very sad. Uh, Maestro Matthew Wardell coming into the studio at ten oh five. He, of course, is the conductor of the Ocala Symphony Orchestra, and we love that orchestra. We love Matthew, so it's always good to have him coming in. He's going to talk about a couple of things. Carmina Barana, is that how you say it? Uh, which is a show I guess they're doing, and then. Hold on, I'll tell you in a second. The the young musicians thing, the young artists thing, right? Yep. He's going to be disappointed. I, I, that it just didn't roll off my lips. It's, <laughs> nothing rolls off my lips with tongue, whatever it is. Uh, Joe Reichel will be here at 1035. He, of course, hosts his own program called Damage Control. He's the owner of Damage Control Services, one of them anyway. And uh, he'll be in the studio to be on the air to talk to you about your questions about things that might have been damaged. And coincidentally, speaking of that, uh, that storm that is coming our way, mm -hmm. we are... Um, just, just south of the area they say possibly could get freezing rain. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it reaches just about here. Wow. And if they're just slightly wrong, it could be freezing rain. And you know what that could mean? That could mean limbs falling down. Yeah. Because when the rain true. freezes on the limbs, it becomes heavy. And next thing mm -hmm. you know, limbs are falling down and it could cause damage. So uh, possibly we will be spared from it, at least according to the weather map mm -hmm. that I looked at this morning. But Joe will be here to answer questions in case you do have damage, whether it's from that or anything. Dr. Stephen V. Edelman is coming on at 11.05. He is the professor of medicine in the Division of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism at the University of California in San Diego. He's wanted to give us some new ways to control diabetes. And then 11.20, Michelle Finnerin, 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 Michelle Finnerin Denity is coming on. She wants to tell us the results of a new ADT McAfee survey, how to protect yourself against the latest security risks. You might have heard that Michael's um, store, mm -hmm. not, not just our local one, but the, the national chain of them, apparently had somebody hack into it and was getting information from people's credit cards. Yeah. Neiman Marcus had the same problem, and so yep. did uh, Target. Check most likely, most people still. in this community only had to worry about the Target and the <laughs> Michaels. That's right. <laughs> you have a few out there that might be buying from Neiman Marcus. Isn't that a very expensive outlet or whatever? 
Yeah. Uh, on Fun with Joe today, I do have a fun segment. It's uh, the reason it took me a little bit longer than usual this morning to get ready. I'm sure the listeners didn't notice it, but you noticed it, Rob. Yep. You, saw, you saw me still in there going, whoa, <laughs> it's getting close. He's still there. He's even it's, got the light on. So. It's getting close. <laughs> That's right. He's got the light on. He's scurrying. <laughs> Uh, so I have I have the snippets of jingles and and taglines from commercial advertisements throughout the years, and oh, wow. in other words, you and Joe will listen to them and then tell me what product they were advertising. Oh, cool! And this it, is it, fun. it is one of the days where the bell will be very helpful because whoever rings the bell first gets to answer because you might both say the same answer almost the same time. <laughs> We'll make sure that So the bell will be very important today. Yeah. And then when we speak to Galen today, some statistics that show there are some ways that you ladies Uh are superior to us men. Really? Now, this is not something to argue. (laughs) This is statistics. Yeah. Statistically (laughs) proven things. Now, not every one. You might be an exception. But in general, (laughs) statistically how women outdo us men. Wow. So it's a fun, fun, fun little uh, survey that I was looking at this morning. I'm all so ears. We'll talk about that. Uh, so let's take. Um, oh, and don't forget today is the uh, State of the Union address. President oh, Obama right. giving his pres- uh, State of the Union address this evening. Yep, that's right. I'm sorry, I don't have the time in front of me. It's uh, usually nine o'clock. Also, usually, also, but. folk singer uh, Pete Seeger passed away. Oh, I guess it was yesterday. He did. He was 94 years old, Rob. Oh my gosh. 94 years wow. old. In- interesting guy. He was a uh, he was a supporter at least early in his life. He was a supporter of communism, and and don't get me wrong, I did like the guy, mm-hmm. but I often thought, you know, I just want to talk, talk to you just for a second, Pete. Can I have a conversation with you? He's listening. We have already tried this, and we've also tried capitalism, which is what we do. Mm-hmm. And I realize that some people say capitalism is better and some people say communism is better, but the the proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. It doesn't usually happen that people immigrate from a capitalist country to a communist country, but it happens all the time that people do the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. In in fact, the communist countries don't want them to leave. Yeah. It's often impossible to get out of those countries for those folks. That's correct. On our our side of it, though, they say, go ahead, if you want to go, go. Yeah, go ahead, leave. It is. It's just one of those things, uh, you know. But Mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the on the at the core of what communism is supposed to be about. Okay, everybody's gonna we're gonna all gonna chip in, but it doesn't work out that way. You know, it never works out that way. I I don't. I think we have a pretty good system right here. I do too. As long as we don't keep messing it up. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And then uh, Crest toothpaste is releasing a new toothpaste. It's um, four dollars and ninety nine cents. If you're interested. Oh. Okay. It's chocolate flavored. Ew. They also have mint <gasps> chocolate flavored. Okay. <laughs> so I want to brush- be refreshed, not like I just ate a Sunday. <laughs> That's why I brush my teeth. What day is it? Sunday. Oh, use the chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Use the chocolate. <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right. Quick second look at the news here. A uh, proposed a proposed constitutional amendment to allow the medical use of marijuana will go before voters Good. in November. I'm glad. I like the idea of us voting on this. Mm-hmm. When I looked at this, it's not about smoking marijuana. It's about extracting the good stuff that can help people with uh, seizures. Yeah. And giving them the medicine in pill form. That's the way I understood it, mm-hmm. which is why I signed the uh, the petition when it came our way. Yeah, me too. I don't like the idea that it's a constitutional amendment. We've gone through this many, many times. I am not the expert on this, but we've had experts on the show explaining why something that you want to be in law is better if it's put into legislation rather than as an amendment. I'm not the expert. I can't really explain yeah. it, but I remember hearing it and it made sense to me. So it would still do the same thing. It just wouldn't be an amendment. Yeah, it should just Which be anyway, a law. anyway. So, uh, but anyway, it made it through yesterday. I had a little buzz on my phone because I had that. The thing on my phone where I, yeah. I ask, hey, if you've got the news, would you send it to me, please? Yeah. <laughs> so we can talk about it. So, and then, of course, every, right. everybody had it. So everybody has that little buzz thing that they have. That's right. Star Banner is reporting that the Marion County Commission is considering selling the, the jail to a private prison company and then leasing it back and running it. The, the county wants to run the jail. 
Oh. But possibly gee. have it owned by a private organization called Corrections Corporation of America. Oh, man. Very debatable topic, and uh, I'm not so sure that I understand it, but uh, there you go. Yeah. I don't know. That's I don't think so. And uh, the last one I want, I want to bring up is Estelle Benson. Estelle Benson is a lady who passed away on Friday. She and her husband, Earl, were responsible for the resurrection of the Orange Blossom Opry in Weirsdale. Yep. Star Bennett has a wonderful article, uh, tribute, really, mm-hmm. written by Dave Schlenker. Dave did a wonderful job remembering Estelle. And uh, so I, I got two minutes here to remember Estelle. And uh, I didn't know her that well. But I did meet her. You and I met her. And uh, the reason we met her is because, long story short, we discovered a recording artist, a bluegrass recording artist named Rhonda Vincent. Mm -hmm. Watched her DVD, watched her sing and play on this DVD in my little TV in my little living room, and thought, I I like this lady. I wonder if she's playing any place nearby. So I went online to her website and found Weirsdale. Yeah. (laughs) She's playing a Weirsdale. What's in Weirsdale? (laughs) Yeah. And you and I went over to what used to be a a school. What school did it used to be? It it, it was the Weirsdale school from uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Okay. Yep, when it first started up till the 50s, then and it went to 6th grade. And so we went we went over there and it was not, you know, they weren't having a show at that time. We just kind of walked in and the nice lady in there was not Estella, it was some other lady. And she gave us a little tour of the the theater. Mm-hmm. That that is awesome. Unbelievable. And we looked at each other and said, "You can't I can't believe this is here." It's amazing. This is an amazing theater, an amazing stage, and wow. Mm-hmm. And then if you look at the lineup of guests, which include Roy Clark, which include uh, Rhonda, Tillis. Rhonda Vincent, Mel Rhonda. Tillis, yeah. um, Bellamy Brothers, Crystal yeah. Gale. Mm-hmm. I'm trying Everybody. to think of some of the ones I, that we know. Yeah, all the famous guys. Um, the uh, Harmonicats? Yes. Harmonicats? What do they call them? Harmonicats? Mm-hmm. Harmonicats. And anyway, so they have this amazing lineup of entertainers that show up over there, and the thing is packed. Mm-hmm. The thing is packed. Packed. Over 600 seats. And uh, is that right? I can't, yeah. I can't remember the number. And and so uh, we found out that on Thursdays, they allow local people who play guitar and sing to, to yeah. take the stage. Or harmonica. Or, or anything, anything. Any musical instrument. Yeah. So we said, really? So we decided to do this. Now, this is... Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've done music forever, but it's not usual for us to be on a real stage with real yeah. spotlights, with a real sound system, with a real audience. And with a real band. I mean, they with a real band. Too. Yeah, that yeah. was so cool. So we, we did this on a Thursday, and we did it for a while on, on mm-hmm. whenever we had it. See, it's hard, really, because we have to get up so early to do this show. Mm-hmm. So we did it a few times. But my most favorite memory um, was... Uh, Estelle and, and Earl were very, Earl is Estelle's husband, if I didn't already yes. mention that, who, Estelle just passed away. But a favorite memory was when she kind of showed us around, and I brought my mom. Yeah. Uh, my mom lived in uh, Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. and I had written a song for my mom called Grandma's Quilts. Mm-hmm. And my mother knew the song, of course, but, and... See, Beverly Hills was such a long drive. I had, I had to go this an hour there, right? Mm-hmm. And then an hour back. And then and then maybe a half hour to get to Weirsdale. And then after the show, I had to go all the way back to Beverly Hills to bring my mom home. Right. And then, of course, I had to get up at 3 o'clock in order to do this show. Yep. So I'm not crying any hardship. I'm just saying that it was, a, it was something I was glad I did. Yeah, but we did it. We did it. And I was glad Always. I did it because of the fact that, you know, I could have said, you know, that's a long drive. And I said, no, I want to do it. So I went there and I told Estelle, I got a song from, she, well, they want to know what's, because you only can play two songs. Yeah. Right? So what two songs do you want to play? What, what's the key it's in? Right? And so you tell them. So I said, I got something special I want to do tonight. Of One of the songs is from my mom and she's here. And uh, Estelle said, well, where is she? You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, the word got around where my mom was sitting in the theater. Mm -hmm. And so you and I were up on the, on the stage and we played grandma's quilts. Yeah. And the, the young lady who was the announcer mentioned that it was, that she was in the audience. I think I mentioned it too, but she, I think she ordered 
or commanded or whatever she did. The, the <laughs> young person with the spotlight. Miss Bond, yeah. To put it on to uh, my mom. So the spotlight went on my mom. My mom stood up. It was like, wow. Yeah, everybody applauded. This was cool. And the place is packed. Yeah. I mean, so e- even, I mean, they don't show up for us. They just show up because they love the place. Yeah, they love the music. They and uh, even, even on what you would call amateur night. They call it jam night, but it was really amateur night. Yeah. Even on amateur night, which was Thursdays, they might still do it. I don't really know. It's been a yeah, while since do. we did it. They still do it on Thursdays. So I guess long story short is Estelle really and her husband Earl, they really contributed something really wonderful to our community. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, the Orange Blossom Opry was there before they they didn't start it. Right. But it was flailing, fl- failing, whatever you want to yeah, say. And, and Estelle found out that it was for sale. Uh, according to uh, the, the article that Dave wrote, uh, Earl said, you got to be kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you want to buy it? She just so anyway, so anyway, she wanted to buy it, so they did buy it, and long story short, it was it's a great success, and it will continue to be a success. There's a memorial tribute for her tonight. Yep. Over at the Opry, and uh, seven o'clock. They, they promise. They promise it's going to be lots of music and lots of memories for Estelle. Yeah, um, she's wonderful. And one one real quick one. Uh, we got to know Rhonda too, Rhonda Vincent mm-hmm. a little bit, and Rhonda had a memory, and Dave actually put it in the paper that. Um, Estelle, because of her cooking background, mm-hmm. would always cook for the, the artists. Yes. And apparently one of Rhonda's favorite things was peanut butter pie. Yeah. Which I didn't know that until mm-hmm. I read the article this morning. And uh, Estelle and Earl, on one note, they're very patriotic. So at the end of every always, show, yes. they always played uh, God Bless America. And Estelle would be up front. And she would be holding the American flag. Yes. And she would yes. be waving it. And yeah. it was just gave everybody chills and... Estelle, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. 85 years old. She passed away yeah. Friday, I think they said. Yeah, Friday. Yes. All right. Uh, we have we took a little bit longer than I should have, and I apologize for that. We need to go to Bring Back the Bible with Pastor Walter B. Smith, and then we have a guest coming up. This is The Source, WOCA. Well, a good day to you, and welcome again to Bring Back the Bible. I'm Pastor Smith coming to you from Heritage Baptist Church in Northeast Ocala. One of my favorite verses over the years is from Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. I know very few people that will admit that their life's goal is to be miserable. I know some people that are miserable all the time, but I don't believe that their goal in life from birth to now has been, boy, I want to be miserable. People most of the time say they want to be happy, And yet, if you know many people at all, you realize that there's a lot of people in our world right here in Ocala that are not happy. And part of the reason for that is so many people are seeking their delight in the wrong places. When we delight in things that are temporary, even some good things, we are at best having fleeting happiness. But when we delight in things that are eternal, we can enjoy happiness and joy regardless of our circumstances. The principle for us is that we need to walk each and every day with our hearts fixed on that which is eternal. We need to delight ourselves in the Bible, the Word of God, in God's gift of salvation only through Jesus Christ and our future in heaven. If we have a focus on those, it can keep a spirit of rejoicing in us no matter what because our delight then is in the right thing. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, your company supplier of banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Where you give them approved artwork by noon, the next day by 4 p.m., you pick up your banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. 
Hi, Carl Champley here. Join me every Saturday afternoon for DIY Live, your complete guide to getting that DIY project started and finished the right way. And when you need the right product for that do-it-yourself project, visit the DIY Home Center outlet right here in Ocala, just two miles east of I-75 on Northwest 10th Street. From carpet to doors to real wood cabinets, visit the DIY Home Center outlet today and tune in to DIY Live. That's DIY Live Saturdays right here on WOCA, The Source. AA Lock, Dock, and Security has moved to a brand new location and wants to personally invite you to the spectacular grand opening event on Friday, February 7th. Come by and see the very latest in lock and security technologies. WOCA will be there broadcasting live and giving away some station swag and some fantastic prizes from top name brands like Stanley, Honeywell, Paxton Access, Aero Medico, Master Lock, and more. Plus, we're giving away not one, but two grand prizes a home security system fully installed and monitored for a full year, and a business access control keyless entry system fully installed. There'll be hot dogs, hamburgers, drinks, and more. So bring a friend and come help us celebrate with food, fun, and prizes for the new location grand opening of AA Lock, Dock, and Security. It's all happening Friday, February 7th at the brand new location, 219 Northwest 10th Street, just a tenth mile east of 441. That's Friday, February 7th, AA Lock, Dock, and Security. All right, thank you. I apologize for running a little bit late. Uh, 22 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, the Super Bowl is this coming weekend. And any, anytime there's a big event, there's, there's a couple times there's an event in, I think it's Orlando, uh, and there's a, a strip club down there called Platinum or something like that. Right? Something like that, yeah. And it always makes the news because it's when they make their they make their biggest <laughs> profits, right? Yes. They make their biggest profits when there's a large event happening down there, and and so we always giggle about that. Oh, all the guys are going to the strip club and things like. But you know, you you wonder, you know, where who are these ladies? I mean, I mean, really, what is their story? What is their life like? Mm-hmm. You know, and um, if you really think about it, it's got to be um, not so good. Yeah, for some I, I, of them. I can't, yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine. I mean, I'm sure that somebody will say, oh, come on, Larry, I read The Happy Hooker. Well, she had a good time. <laughs> That's right. In her book, she said she did. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of people out there, women especially, who are actually um, being forced into this. It's, it's mm-hmm. And children. Yeah. Bill Blackwire knows more about this than we ever will. He um, is doing a wonderful thing by exposing a lot of this. He is the president and CEO of Bethany Christian Services. He wants to tell us how the Child Welfare Agency is committed to protecting vulnerable children by working with governments in uh, all over the world, really, um, to stop child trafficking. And uh, with the Super Bowl coming up, it's it's just another one uh, of the locations. Maybe the Olympics will be one. I don't really know how this works. I don't know how Russia handles these things. Yeah. Um, Bill Blackwire. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Larry and Robin. Thank you for being on the air with us. Thanks We're, so- where are you? Yeah, well, thank you. Where are you, Bill? I'm sorry. I'm uh, located in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. There might be a delay, and I apologize for that. It, it'll sometimes make it seem like we're speaking over you. I don't mean to be doing that. Um, so how did I do in the intro? Is is that pretty much what this is about? We, we sometimes look at prostitution as something to giggle over, but there's really something really dubious underneath it all. Uh, very much so. The This is called human trafficking, and the women that are involved, the sex workers that are involved, have been exploited at a very young age. And I would just like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to, to talk about this. Bethany is committed to raising awareness about the prevalence of human trafficking. Uh, we work with governments and other agencies to prevent as well as to provide uh, hope and counseling for, for victims of, of this trade. Wow. And uh, is, is it how, I'm sure it's all over the place and it's not just associated with large events, but do large events make it even more prevalent in the community where the large event is, for example, in New Jersey this week? Very much so, because there will be thousands of people, tourists, coming for Super Bowl, not just for the Super Bowl itself, but for a whole week of partying. And uh, Forbes magazine reported that they believed over 10,000 prostitutes were brought into Miami for their Super Bowl. In Dallas in 2011, 133 
uh, minors were arrested for prostitution during during the Super Bowl. My and goodness. I know that New Jersey law enforcement and governments uh, are already trying to work to prevent it. So when you say brought in, I immediately en- envisioned uh, women on the airplanes forced to fly against their will and then somehow you know, herded, herded to a hotel or something like that. Is, is that. is that an accurate visualization? Yes. And, you know, most of them are associated with pimps who are going to arrange some form of transportation, whether that's flying or driving, to come in. Uh, they're expected to engage in uh, sex work while they're there. And this will be done in hotels and restaurants and, and on the street. And I think, as you said earlier, Larry, uh, I think people are coming, they're looking to have a good time, but they need to realize that the, that the person that they're engaging is someone who has been exploited, probably from a very young age. The average age of a child being trafficked is somewhere between 12 and 14 years of age. And they need to realize this person has come from a broken home, uh, they've been mistreated, and because of their desperation for maybe food, shelter, uh, they're in this work against their will. My goodness. And and when we use the word pimps, people usually think it's men, but it's not just men. It's women, too, because the women are uh, working this world also, getting these young younger women to trust the older women, and then they put them in the prostitution, too. Very much so. And, and they estimate that the annual annual revenue for child trafficking is something like $32 billion. So you know lots of people um, are engaged in in forcing uh, people into sex work. Uh, When the uh, uh, underage girls were arrested down in Miami, uh, where do they go then since they're underage? Do they go to homes? Are they removed from that type of of, uh, community? Well, that's where agencies like Bethany step in, and law enforcement will refer uh, them to us for either a foster home or to maybe work them back to their uh, own biological family and to provide the counseling and other help that they need uh, to remove themselves from this type of uh, work that they're involved in. And Bethany... Uh, we're a child preservation, child welfare agency. We work around the, ro- the world, and we work with various governments, including the United States and other countries like Ghana and uh, South uh, Africa, to help victims of child trafficking. Wow. And, and have you personally been involved in the rescue of some of these people, some of these women or children? Bethany itself is not involved in the rescue. We do get involved um, right afterwards. So like law enforcement, other organizations will remove uh, children from that type of situation they're in, and then will contact us. And I know like in Ghana, law enforcement there said to us, we don't have enough resources. And so many times after we rescue this child, we bring them back to their uh, family, they might be right back into... Uh, being exploited again. And so that's why uh, we have foster homes available. We work with the communities to say we need to provide treatment for these young girls. And uh, there are also young boys, too, involved, aren't they? Very much so. There are young boys and girls involved in sex work. And then there's also this whole element of, of child labor. And uh, around the world, a lot of children are exploited. Um, they're used basically as slaves because they've been trafficked to do work. Wow. wow. There was, I watched a video one time on YouTube, and it was a, a woman who had somehow come out of all of that. She, she was living the life you're describing, and she's now, um, I guess, an evangelist, or, or she works with an evangelist. Real, real a super pretty lady. And, and just telling about what it was like for her and how she felt like, you know, by God's grace, she no longer is in that. And you, and you hear that, and you go, wow, you know what? She's the the story she could tell and the, the pigs that she had to put up with. It's just it's it's almost embarrassing to be a man when you when you think about what we will do. You know what I mean? Just I don't know. 
it's hard it's hard to explain but it, it is i mean it's our half of the i mean robin keeps defending the men i know in, in most things that we talk about which is good because there are women pimps and there are boys mm -hmm. but this is truly a, a disgrace that, uh, that we are somehow direct indirectly responsible for if we don't do anything i guess yeah. so what what can we do well, one, I think we can support our law enforcement and what they're doing. I think bringing awareness to this issue, and just as you're talking about, it's. I think sometimes people think, well, I'm going to go to a party or I'm going to this big event and this is all okay, and, it, and it's not. They need to realize they are exploiting another human being. They may be exploiting a minor, and they should refrain from that behavior. And I know... Law enforcement is encouraging hotel workers, just don't look the other way. If you see something that doesn't appear right, you need to report that. Um, the other thing, I refer people to, to Bethany's website, Bethany.org. Uh, we are always looking for foster parents, mentors, and at our website you can find out more information about child trafficking and ways that you can help uh, the victims of, of this uh, industry. All right. Um, th this is this is. Uh, it, it sounds like what you're saying is that we need to get the word out to the Johns, the potential guys who are going to spend the money. And I, it's just I'm having a hard time believing that they're going to even pay attention to what we're saying. Yeah. I just I just you know. It's all about self. They're gonna they're gonna go. They're gonna say I got I got forty. Oh, she wants it. Come on, this is what she does for a living. You know. I just I just it's just hard to believe that anybody actually believes that. One one of the most disgusting things I watched one time was a guy who flew all the way to Bangkok or something. I mean, he yeah. flew from here all, all the yeah. way to have sex with some children. Right. And Where, he was I, an attorney or something. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Atlanta, yeah. Unbelievable. What, there's no no women in your own town you can go out on a mm -hmm. date and maybe, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh well, the, the, you're, horrible situation. You're doing an awesome thing, Bill. You guys over at Bethany Christian Services. Uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, even even you know, Red Skeleton used to say at the end of his show, "If I made one person laugh, I've done my job." Well, you know, I'm sure that every time you rescue a girl, or maybe even convince a guy to say, "You know what? He's right. I shouldn't be doing this," you've helped somebody get back onto the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. Well, we often say that here it's one child at a time. Our, our goal is to rescue one child at a time. And, um, you know, I think that's the other thing what people can do. Here in the United States, there's over 100,000 children in foster care uh, whose parental rights have been terminated, and we are working to get those children placed. And if these children don't get placed, uh, they are just very vulnerable to be uh, exploited into sex work, prostitution, um, because they have no one else and they have no family. And that's another way we as a country can, can help our children. Any, any way that you can help out in Russia during the, the uh, Olympics, or is that country off limits to you guys? Mm -hmm. Well, at this point, we are not working in Russia. We did at uh, one time. Um, so, yeah, that's a very scary thing because we have been involved in other countries like with the World Cup with uh, with soccer, and that goes on at all these events. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure this is going to go on at the Olympics as well. Yeah. Such a shame. Uh, Bill, give the website again, please. It is Bethany.org. Bethany.org. Easy enough. Uh, Bill Blackwire. Thank Easy enough. And go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, and I was just going to say, we have offices uh, throughout the United States, so it's not just Grand Rapids, but uh, we're in over 36 states here in the United States. All right. Uh, Bill, thank you for what you're doing. You're making the world a better place and uh, saving some children in the process, which you couldn't do anything better with your life. Thank you for doing that, and thank you for taking some time to be on our show this morning. Good, and thank you, Larry and Robin, for uh, letting me participate. All right, we'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. Hey, it's Christy with Ocala Mac and PC Repair and Ocala Guest Wi-Fi to let you know we have you covered. We are the only local certified Apple and Microsoft computer company in Ocala. We are family-owned and operated. From mobile repair to wireless networks, viruses, new systems, or security cameras, we do it all. Check us out online, ocalamacpc.com, or give us a call, 352-566-8324. Tell them Nick, Madison, or Mason sent you and get free diagnostic. 
with your internet telephone service from the company that brought affordable internet service to Ocala in the first place. All is safe is a sister company of Ocala Guest Wi-Fi, a company you've known and trusted for all your internet needs. Whether you need a phone or hundreds, we've got the products and services to meet your needs both now and in the future. Our plans include everything from local and long distance calling to equipment maintenance and even software upgrades. You can count on All is Safe to give you cost certainty knowing that your bill will be the same next week, next month, or even next year. Call 352-450-8647 today. Tell them how to cut your monthly telephone bill up to 60%. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. A proposed constitutional amendment to allow the medical use of marijuana will go before Florida voters in November after the state Supreme Court narrowly approved the ballot language yesterday. The 4-3 to three decision is a victory for personal injury lawyer John Morgan, who spent $4 million on a medical marijuana petition drive, and a defeat for Republican Attorney General Pam Bondi, who fought to keep the question off the ballot. The decision comes three days after Morgan's secured enough voter signatures to make the ballot. He made a massive push in December and January to beat the February 1st deadline instead of waiting for the Supreme Court decision. The Star Banner is reporting that the Marion County Commission is considering selling the Marion County Jail to a private prison company. The idea credited to Commissioner Stan McLean stemmed from a tour of the jail facility McLean gave last year to executives from Corrections Corporation of America. The article indicates that McLean said selling the jail property and buildings would not mean privatizing jail operations. The county would operate the jail under a long-range lease with an option to buy back the site. The move to privatize the jail facility, though not its operations, would be a financial decision, which theoretically would add money to the county's budget. The report states that the county commission did not discuss details such as what would be done with the revenue, the specifics of any proposed lease, or who would maintain the facility if it was sold. County Administrator Lee Niblock will research the matter, said he could have the results ready for the commission's consideration by late March or early April, according to the report. A provision in the recently negotiated Farm Bill is designed to tackle the scourge of citrus greening, a bacterial disease that is devastating to crops in Florida and several other states. Included in the legislation's conference report is $125 million spread over five years that will be guaranteed to go to citrus disease research. An additional $125 million over five years in discretionary citrus funding was also included in the bill, although the money still will need to be approved approved during the appropriations process each year. Senator Bill Nelson, a Democrat from here in Florida, and Representative Vern Buchanan, a Republican from Florida, pushed for the funding. It comes after an additional $20 million was put into the omnibus spending bill approved by Congress earlier this month. The Farm Bill, a massive piece of legislation that is customarily revamped and passed every five years to lay out the structure of agriculture spending, is nearly complete. The bill was approved yesterday by a bipartisan and conference committee of members from both the House of Representatives and the Senate. It is on track for a vote in the House on Wednesday and in the Senate as early as the end of this week. The money is designed to help researchers and the citrus industry combat the disease, which has put a major impact on Florida and also spread into California, Louisiana, Texas, Georgia, and South Carolina. And we were saddened to learn that Estelle Benson passed away on Friday. Estelle, along with her husband Earl, were responsible for the resurrection of the Orange Blossom Opry in Weirsdale, built in the gymnasium of an old school building. Estelle was 85 years old. The Orange Blossom Opry has been a venue for top name entertainers, including Crystal Gale, Rhonda Vincent, the Bellamy Brothers, Mel Tillis, Roy Clark, and many, many more. It even gave local performers an opportunity to perform on the big stage every Thursday during their jam. Night. The Opry is inviting the public to a celebration of life for Estelle Benson tonight at 7 p.m. Dave Schlenker for the Star Banner wrote a wonderful tribute to Estelle in the paper. Memorials may be made in her name to the Lake Sumter Children's Advocacy Center. And those are the headlines from the source WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. Trauma care centers save thousands of Florida lives. But Shands UF wants to close Ocala Regional's trauma center. An out-of-town hospital that receives millions in taxpayer money is suing to shut down Ocala's trauma center. They want to pull the plug on life-saving trauma care all over Florida. Don't let them get away with it. 
trauma care increases the chance of survival and traumatic injuries by 25%. 25%. That's right. But only two in five Floridians have the access to trauma care they need. And that's not even close to good enough. We don't need less access to trauma care. We need more. It's time for Shans UF to stop putting profits ahead of patients. Stop playing political games. Visit SaveOurTraumaCenters.org to find out how you can help keep Ocala's trauma center open and protect life-saving trauma care. Save more lives. Save our trauma centers. Paid for by the 60 Plus Association. All right, three minutes before eight o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this um, nice day. Really, temperatures look pretty nice. Anyway, a little bit overcast, but uh, we got some. There's some weather up there coming this way and it looks like we are just going to miss it. it looks like the the line that the weather channel is you know putting on their maps to indicate where this weather is going to be is just north of us and this is an issue if if it does reach us well it's an issue for those folks for mm-hmm. sure because when it re- rain freezes which is what they say is going to do in the the deep south like the southern part of uh, Georgia and Alabama the rain freezes on the tree limbs and brings down the tree limbs. Yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> and we've seen that firsthand. I don't want it in my own backyard, that's for sure. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Galen Newton is on the phone from Life South. He does this each day so that we can have fun. And also to remind us of going to Life South and donating blood. I'm about a week away from being due. Yep. A week and a few the days, 7th right? 7th of February is the day. Good morning, Galen. How you doing? Hey, good morning, Larry Robin. How are y'all? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm about, let's see, seven, eight, nine, about 10 days away from being eligible to donate blood again. Yep. Uh, we're going to need it, too. This ice storm is uh, it's, it's, it's going to impact our blood supply pretty across the country. Uh, it's, it's already had an impact, and it's going to have an impact on Life South as well, because we've already had to shut down all of our operations in Huntsville and in Birmingham, and we haven't quite yet made that decision on Montgomery, but uh, it's coming. And then this afternoon, we're going to have to bring all our all our people on our buses back early in Atlanta uh, because of this ice storm. So we're we're just kind of watching the weather channel and hoping for the best right now. Yeah, and I don't know much about meteorology, but the the weather channel was saying something about the dew point was unusual. Right. I, I don't know if it said unusually low or unusually high, but it was unusual, mm-hmm. and therefore. Freezing dew points of the, wherever they are, ice ice on trees going to bring down limbs. It's, I heard those words and I said, "Okay, yeah, that's not good." And, and then I looked at the map to see where it was going to be, and it is not far from us. So, mm-hmm. well, the scary part of that is, yeah, I mean, I guess the trees, but it's really black ice, and that's what. We're oh yeah, about yeah. It. It, the, the the roads itself, ice patches, and when you're driving a, a blood mobile that you know weighs several tons. Um, it, it's uh, it, it's a great big uh, square object that's very hard to stop sometimes and, and, and can be tricky to maneuver. So that's where our concern lies is with, with the flood mobile. And um, that, that's what we're concerned about is ice on the road. And, and not only for the blood mobiles, but just for our staff getting to and from work and uh, everything else. So, yeah, it's going to kind of hold it off for the next two days yeah. how bad it's going to get. Yeah, so we got ice storms in the southeast, snow in the northeast. Well, maybe we might have snow like in the Panhandle or something. Because if it's going to be icy, it's not rain what they down say. Here, no, they say it's the dew point. Oh, no the dew snow. point thing oh. is I don't understand yeah. it either. Oh, but the, okay, it, it's not going to rain. But what's happening is the dew point's going to be at the same temperature as the air. And so what's going to happen is that when it dews, it's going to freeze, um, and that freeze is going to you know, impact all the plants and trees and obviously create ice on the road. And that's, that's really the big concern. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you got, wow. So you're in the, you're in the business. Oh, you always have to be like three or four days ahead of the rest of the world in, in what you do. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Well, actually, you know, in, in my particular role, I, I try to stay three or four months of, in, in front of the blood supply. But when you're, when you're dealing with, with weather like this, you're, you're really managing it hour to hour. But, um, but I guess, know, because it, yeah, the, the the decisions we have to make um, are are literally hour to hour as far as bringing in the blood mobiles or sinking them out or or, or what have you. So right, right, right. Well, yeah. I guess I guess what I was trying to say is that when, like, for example, nine one one of two thousand one, you said a lot sure. of people showed up the next day. 
had there, and, and in that particular case, there wasn't a whole lot of need for blood because people either survived or did. They didn't. There wasn't a whole lot of people using blood. But, um, but everybody showed up, and of course, their blood couldn't be used for a few days. And of course, we learned that from you. Now, you have to run around right now saying, look, there's something coming. We, we need, now's the day to donate. Your recruiting efforts have to be like um up right today, don't yes. don't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Because the um, and to put it in perspective, and you know, Life South is in three different states. Um, we have 19 different regions of the world that, uh, of the of the area that we cover in those three states. And so today, uh, I'm doing the math in my head. Seven of those regions are already shut down um, from not collecting blood. We're probably going to shut down two more and then probably two other ones in, in, in Atlanta. So by the end of the day, over half of our operations will be shut down. Um, and that's, that's half of our community's blood supply. So the other half is going to have to step in and, and really collect in order to help support those communities. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And that so doesn't even begin to target what's going on in, in the Northeastern part of the world where they had just gotten back to normal you know, for a day, um, and now here they come with another ice storm, and, and uh, it's it's not good. It's yeah. not good at all. Yeah. Uh, so the, the bottom line is here, and Galen's real purpose of being on the air with us is not to have fun, but, but we love the fun. It's to remind everybody that if you can, donate blood. It's as simple as that. Just get out there and do it. So. That's right. That's right. So where are you right now? I'm comfortably in the tree zone. In the tree zone. <laughs> I like it. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I got a little later start today on the highway, so that so, runs fair. So statistically, who gives more blood, yeah. men or women? Well, women do. Women do. And by about 2% because there's more women in the world than there are men. That's, that's my answer to that. But, uh, yeah, women do. 52 to 48. Well, statistically, if you measured how much blood Robin has donated in her life compared to me, it's way more because she's been doing it since she was 17, right? Yeah, but still yeah. earlier than you. And women are uh, more inclined to, to be givers in the first place. And, uh, it, you know, they they that's just, I think, they have a spot in their heart that wants to give and to help people a little bit more than men, whereas men are, I want to help my own. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> I know there are exceptions. I don't know if it's true. I don't yeah, know. No. But, but anyway, this is... I don't know if it's true. That's the perception. Yeah, that's fair enough, Larry. There you go. This is WOCA Ocala. Let me get that out of the way. The source. Thank you very much. So I have some statistics about women that indicate that in these areas, they definitely are superior to us guys. <laughs> now, again, this is in I know the one. I know, I know the one is they use a lot more words than men do. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more words. Bigger words, usually. We grunt a little bit. Anyway, here, listen to this. It's kind of fun. Uh, women almost never get struck by lightning. How about that? Because they're not stupid enough to be out in the, out the middle of the storm. That's got, uh, yes, that's, I think that's exactly you know, right. Because a guy, you know what, okay, here, here's the scenario. <laughs> um, and yes. Uh-oh, did we lose you? I think Galen disappeared. Yeah, the light's off. All right, call back. Galen will call back. Anyway, so women almost never get struck by lightning. And uh, let's see, uh, t according to the statistics, uh, women are struck by lightning an average of six times less than men. <laughs> lightning only kills 79 people in the U.S. every year, and maybe a dozen of them are women. The rest are all men. And, and Galen probably hit it on the head. It's probably because we're out in the... <laughs> Out there playing is. golf and stuff like that. Galen, are you back there? Yeah, I hit the wrong button. I'm sorry. Okay, so I... So I scenarios, right? We're, we're concluding that you're right, that it's just us guys. We stay outside when it's raining and the women will get uh, it. And here's what will probably happen is they're, you're probably watching a football game and then all of a sudden you don't get a signal anymore. So you, you go outside and try to figure out what happened next thing you know you're like... <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> what the heck happened? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there you go. According to statistics, women are better at noticing that they're unhealthy during middle age. Oh, I, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because I think women inherently care more about what they look like, and um, you know, it, it, that's 
that probably goes hand in hand. Sure. All right. Here's now you could argue those two, but here's when you I think can't. Women are just in general. I think women are much better warriors than men. Yeah, probably, especially. Would you about, say that? Would you agree with that? Well, well, I don't know. I think men worry about their women. I think they worry about their children, but I think women worry about themselves better than we do. Mm-hmm. Right? You look in the mirror. Well, I look in the. I, I, I look in the mirror. I so, say, I look alright. <laughs> well, yeah, like like for example, and and, and again, this it's, I'm making generalities. All right, so, um, but like if someone falls, a guy's like, "Oh, you're fine. Get up." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. what I mean by that. So, well, well, I know when I was in my my car wreck, the EMTs, I, the the other driver was a woman and, and a pretty woman at that yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> i did not end up in the back of that ambulance being <laughs> attended to no i was standing outside going i wonder if they realize there's another person involved in this thing yeah you were ignored yeah the, yeah they <laughs> didn't pay EMT yeah absolutely you. they had no care for it <laughs> uh, he's a big guy that hip flip thing you would have been in the back of that ambulance <laughs> <laughs> it's cpr all right the next way that women are statistically superior to men is the fact that way more women reach the age of 100 than men do absolutely way yeah, more. That, yeah 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 well and there's a there's actually medical reasons for that because of they they're less likely to have a heart attack and and things like that. So, and, and a lot of that has to do with their uh, the fact that they have a, a natural bloodletting process every month until a certain age. No, oh, that's so. true. There you go. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, didn't take that into consideration. By the way, I was looking up euphemisms one day, and you know what the euphemism is for, for missing a period? Mm -mm. It's a broken typewriter. Really? It's a broken typewriter. <laughs> I've never heard that. Uh, if, a, if, a girl, if a girl says... A broken to, what? Typewriter. A, what? A, a girl says to her boyfriend, I got a broken typewriter. He goes, oh my God, you're missing a period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Broken typewriter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. Well, I, I you know, some, you know, like you work, you know, months in advance with what you do. I do the same thing with this Galen segment. I think, I think days in advance. That's right. So right now I'm working on a euphemism special. <laughs> a broken type. I've never heard that. No, I hadn't either, actually. But, but there you go. See, yep. I'm not even bright enough to get that. You, have, if you wouldn't have said. If you were to finish that with I'm missing a period, I'm like, well, what the heck? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Have you heard about the Olympic urinals? Have you heard about the Olympic urinals? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I think we saw one at the Peabody Hotel down in Orlando, but I didn't know that's what they were called. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's not what they're really called. That's just what people are calling them. And I went into one down at the Peabody, and what it was is they have a urinal that's way down to the floor. And I guess that's for the guy in the wheelchair. That's all okay. I can figure. It's way down low. Yeah. And then there's a lower one, and then there's a higher one. Now, the, the highest one is in the middle. <laughs> And then the lowest one on the floor is to the left, and then the second and the second one is to the right. And it's almost like the steps at the Olympics when you win in the gold. <laughs> right. I remember walking into this thing, and the, the middle one and the high one were taken. So I took the wheelchair one, and I thought, I must be getting the bronze. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, a, it's another, it, yeah. Oh, I know. It, it's, it's just a life observation. It's kind of like so a preview funny. of another Galen segment, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Olympic urinals. <laughs> you could have gotten the gold. You could have waited to get I could have waited. I could have said, <laughs> you know, it's not right that I should use the wheelchair one. <laughs> There's nobody right. in here with a wheelchair right now, and uh -huh. I'll be done real quick. Yes. <laughs> but you know, I'd like to have that opportunity to be standing where the gold goes. <laughs> That's right. You know, usually you don't have those kind of options. Right? <laughs> right. Usually you got well, you got one for like a junior and then, you know, everything else. So yeah, that's I know. Usually enough. there's the low one and then there's the tall ones. There's not usually a third one all the way yeah. to the floor. No, no, I, that's I am surprised you could even deal with that. Oh, it was easy. It's like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> no, it took no yeah. problem. It was no yeah, problem at all. Yeah, but the splash zone, I mean, you know, something that low. Didn't you have, like, a splash or something? No, you're qualified in that. I mean, oh. as a guy, you, you're, you're accustomed to dealing with splash. Oh, come on. I, like, oh. I can write in the snow. Come on. That's why we don't care about our shoes the way uh, women do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
That's too they funny. They completely are. <laughs> It'll dry off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> the, comment, the common courtesy is that you don't get a shoe shine for two days. <laughs> That's what you're taught at a young age. So next, <laughs> next time you're at the Peabody, check out the men's restroom. Yeah. By the way, there was this movement to remove all urinals because the because we're going to have these unisex bathrooms and and you know you have to have all toilets now. Oh my gosh! So, wow. The urinal company of America is upset about that. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> the, the urinal makers union. Yeah, they better be more creative. The what UMU urinals look like <laughs> the UMU. The urinal. <laughs> good morning. You're on the air. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Hugh. You. See, you, you you always hear that a women can endure more pain than men. That men are witty and they're always complaining more, and women uh, can go along and uh, not complain about it and take a lot of pain. That's what they say. That's what they say. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what you keep I, hearing. I don't know how you measure it. I to agree. be honest. Rob, I Robin agrees, though. So. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the you know. They throw out their childbirth. I'll, I'll give them that one. I don't want to have to have childbirth. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine it. Can't imagine it. Uh, here, here's one that women are more superior. This is statistically. Women can see more colors than men. That makes sense. Oh. Yeah, yeah we, you, you and I, Gail, will look at a color and we'll say it's white. A woman might say, no, that's not white. That's smoky seashell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I agree. <laughs> Actually, actually, it's a uh, it's statistic. According to an article published in National Geographic in 2012, women are able to see almost all colors more clearly and more brightly than a man can. Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't that and I, I really think that has something to do with the fact that they care about it. Men really don't care. So here's the I question. Mean, we, I, I really don't care what so, color anything is, pretty okay, much. So here's the question I have for these guys that have become women. Yes. Is everything more colorful? <laughs> That's a good question. Is it suddenly more colorful out there? <laughs> they like, they yeah. would probably say they look more colorful on. <laughs> yeah. Like Chaz... Uh, well, think about this. How many pairs of shoes do you own, Larry? How many what? Pairs of shoes do you own two. you wear? Two. Two. <laughs> right? I, that's what I got. I got two. I guess I got three, I, but I, I don't ever wear them because they're uncomfortable. <laughs> like formal occasions, I have to throw those off. <laughs> right? But ask a woman how many shoes... Robin, how many shoes do you have? I've got about 25 pair. 25? Okay. Wow. Right, and that's probably on the lower end scale for women. Because they have to have a color for everything. There you, there's your example. That's a great Maybe example. We, we would be like, the heck with all those decisions. So did, did, It's white, that's black, it's fine. <laughs> Who cares? So did Chast- Chastity Bono. Yeah. When she become a man, did she suddenly throw away 23 of her pairs of shoes and say, wow, everything's black and white? I would think yeah, so. It's just, I, I don't know. Or did she retain her ability to see color? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always amazed that you, where you have to be in your life in order to make that decision. <laughs> I don't know. Ask Bruce Jenner. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw him on Inquiry yesterday. <laughs> yeah, Inquiry might as well know. Good morning. You're on the he air. He does look like he's been taking that. Good morning. Sugar. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Have you all um, ever been to a bar and they have like a footrest that kind of goes all around the stools at the bar? Yeah. Well, up in Baltimore, they have an old, old, old bar where instead of that footrest, there's a trough where it used to be used as a urinal back in the day. Oh. The guys didn't even have to get off the bar. They would just sit there and urinate right at the bar. Oh. They don't, they don't use it, but they use it as an antique type of a sales pitch, but I just think that's disgusting. You're not kidding. <laughs> You're not kidding. I do, too. Oh. Why, why do you think they wear boots? <laughs> 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 Thank you for that. Uh, uh, I mean, see that that's coming. everything you could ever want. You'd never need to leave. On on my um on my Facebook page, I posted a, a, like a twenty five minute video, so it's rather long, but it's very interesting if you have a chance. It's few, maybe a week or so ago, so you got to go way down. It's this female astronaut getting ready to leave the the space station. It gives gives a nice tour mm-hmm. of the space station, and she shows the restroom facilities. And it's very interesting. <laughs> she doesn't demonstrate it, but she does place herself on it. And it's, put it this way, the bowl <laughs> is probably only as wide around as a grapefruit. Okay. So you, a, 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 yeah. There you go. How, how large does it need to be? Well. Well, and you're floating. We're is- talking about number two, Gamma. <laughs> yeah, I get that, but, you know, they're small people. 
That's true. Astronauts usually are small. This woman looks small, yeah. Mm -hmm. And her hair was all over the place because of the zero gravity. <laughs> I bet it was. All right. <laughs> So, so she's up in the space station, right? She's mm -hmm. looking down at Earth, and they're saying, isn't that a nice blue planet? Oh, that's not blue. <laughs> <laughs> that's Asia or something. <laughs> there's, there's, a little, there, there's one shade over there. There's another shade over there. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, women are better able to understand climate change. How about that one for you? Oh, wow. <laughs> now that, that I, I don't thing, agree. <laughs> a researcher at, the, at Michigan State University... Gave a test to men and women. Turned out he concluded that <laughs> men don't understand climate change. <laughs> women right. get it. <laughs> well, what kind of questions did they ask? I mean, I don't think well, there I'm is sure climate that change. They, they, had to, they had to take into account the hot flashes that they go through, <laughs> the cold flashes that they go through. Uh, women blog more than men. There's your word thing you said earlier. Oh, that's true. And the last one, uh, statistically, women recycle more than men, so they're more environmental conscientious. That's probably true, I guess. Yeah, you recycle more than we do. I don't know. I'm guilty of that because I, I don't. If I got throw it in the garbage, and it's <laughs> it goes it's in the gone. garbage. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be on that kick years ago, but it's like, ugh, no thanks. If I, I'm right there, then I'll, I'll do it. I'll if plead not, guilty to not garbage. always abiding by that either. Every time yeah. I open a dog food can, I throw it in the garbage. And go, oh man, I'm supposed to put it in that other thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then you got to <laughs> rinse it out, and then you, do you stick it. I think so. They tell you to rinse it out. See, that's the one that I'll never I'm not do. Sure. It. All right. Well, there you go, Galen. Boy, we had a, we had a little uh, a little side Galen today. It yeah. was the main topic, <laughs> and, th and then we went to the side topic, which was like for a week from now or something. Yeah, exactly. So I'll bring up the Olympic uh, urinals again. But, but but what the fella called in about that bar, too, with the, you know, the guys sitting right there. I mean, I guess it didn't bother anybody to do it. <laughs> it would have bothered me. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> They're men. I think the sense of smell is stronger in women, too. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. See, I, I see. I don't understand here how they even would use that. If you're sitting at the bar yeah. and there's a trough in front of you, you can't just stay seated. See, Why this not? Is, okay, well, maybe years of practice. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, it's like that. Could. It's like that thing they sell for men in the car. Come yeah. on, how do you actually use that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I you, think that's more like a joke, Claire. I don't think actually people actually use that. Really? Maybe truck drivers. Yeah, that's more of a <laughs> how? joke. How? Yeah, but how? <laughs> You're sitting in the, at the steering wheel. How do you do this? And you have to make sure that the zipper part is straight. I mean, you can't go over <laughs> curves and valleys, you know? You, I don't know. That's you more of a kind joke. Of <laughs> I, I don't think people are actually using Really? That. They sell them. <laughs> Wonder who buys them then? It's probably a novelty item. Okay, I got, I got you a gag gift. I know you a lot. Yeah, you could be right. You could be I right. Bet people try Nobody it. Nobody actually right. knew to it. Well, no. All right. Oh. All right. No. <laughs> All right, Robin, we, we need a segue. Uh, what were we talking about? How women are superior to men. <laughs> they don't build bars for women with troughs. <laughs> troughs. We need a segue from. Well, it it it, it seems that there are more. Women phlebotomists and men phlebotomists at, at all of the blood centers. They do. It does seem that way, yeah. yes. But at Life South Community Blood Centers, it seems that they're equally there. So when you go to Life South Community Blood Centers, nobody is superior to anybody else because you're all there for the same reason, and that's to give. So go to Life South, give blood so others can live. There you go. But I'll tell you what. Yeah, and the nonprofit, there are more women in the nonprofit world. And, and as well as in healthcare, generally speaking. So, but the yeah. the guy, the bald headed guy with the with the black rim glasses at Life South, yeah, that guy can get my blood in no time. He, oh, he's perfect. I put my arm. He, he he's the only one who says, "Put your arm out straight." All right, like that. All right, now push it. Boom. Okay, we're done. Okay, <laughs> now just sit there a while. Okay. <laughs> Like, yeah, wow. he's really good. This guy's good. I mean, he he pops it into that vein no time at all. Yeah, like the women are gentle. Is it hurting? No, it's fine. <laughs> oh, I, oh I, I don't have it yet. Oh, there it goes. There, it's going. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but this guy with the bald head, and you know who I'm talking about with the dark rim glasses? Yeah, he doesn't work for us anymore. Oh, he did. Oh, boom! Lord. What happened? Did he pop somebody too hard? I don't know. <laughs> boom! He got <laughs> he's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe he was too good. Uh, all right, Gail, where's the blood mobile today? Blood mobile today is actually at the Walmart in Wedgwood Road. The Wedgwood Road Walmart. <laughs> there you go. 
the biggest Walmart in the area. It's huge. Is that right? Oh my gosh. All right. And if you can't get over there, go next door to the Cascades and Life South is right there. If you're in Denali, where would you go, Robin? Right next door to Sweet Bay. There you go. Sweet Bay. All right, Kaylin. Are you at work yet? Nope, not quite. Not quite. Okay. Well, good. I hate to, I hate to you know waste your time when you're at work talking to us. Oh, don't. This is yeah. never a waste of time. All right. This is absolutely not a waste of time. So going back to the important first point that Galen was making, uh, the ice storm could cause some real issues. So if you can get out there today and uh, have the blood on hand before it's needed, it'll, it'll be yeah, really helpful. Please. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking at the Weather Channel uh, online as we speak, and they're showing wrecks already. People are already oh. sliding off the road. The black ice you were talking about, they're already it's already happening. So Well, I mean, it's it's worse than snow. Yeah. Because you can't really even see it. Because you feel um, safer. Yeah. You don't drive you drive yeah. crazy still. Yeah. And you can't snow. Snow's stop. got a little more grip. Snow has grip. There's no grip at all on that black ice. When my son lived in Ohio for a little over a year, he was um about 22 or 23, and he had never encountered snow, much less black ice, and he did. He, he hit a patch of black ice, and then he called me when it was done. He said, Mom, there's nothing I could do. You start sliding, and you just have to wait for gravity to, to take over and stop. I said, yep. Did he have said, a wreck? That's one of the things. No, he just went into a uh, snowbank. Uh, there wasn't you know, any oh, other wow. car involved, but wow. I mean, it. Uh, you know, you pe- people don't realize what... You know, you're helpless on ice. You just can't stop. So go out and donate blood today before it's needed, because it'll be needed in a few days. Galen, did we lose you again? No, I'm here. Okay. I'm okay. here. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for all you do, Galen, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. You guys are the best. Thanks, y'all. All right. We will take a little Bye. break, and we'll be right back. Your home is safe. Or is it? AA Lock, Dock, and Security. The name has been a staple in Ocala since 1985. Do you have the right equipment in place to have peace of mind when you are at home or away? AA Lock, Dock, and Security has the right people to install and monitor your home or business. Call today for a free on-site security analysis. Call 867-1965. AA Lock, Dock, and Security. 219 Northwest 10th Street. 867-1965. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. All right, let's look at the price of gasoline and uh, see what the best deal is around town. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, the average right now for a gallon of regular unleaded is three thirty-five a gallon. That is uh, up a penny since yesterday. It's up a penny. The best price in town called in uh, four hours ago was the Kangaroo Station on four forty-one and three twenty-nine. It's three. The gas is three twenty-seven a gallon down there. Three twenty-seven a gallon for regular unleaded. And the next one I can tell you about is uh, 52 minutes ago in Bellevue, the Texaco station called with 328 a gallon down in Bellevue. Trauma care centers save thousands of Florida lives. But Shands UF wants to close Ocala Regional's trauma center. An out-of-town hospital that receives millions in taxpayer money is suing to shut down Ocala's trauma center. They want to pull the plug on life-saving trauma care all over Florida. Don't let them get away with it. Trauma care increases the chance of survival and traumatic injuries by 25%. 25%. That's right. But only two in five Floridians have the access to trauma care they need. And that's not even close to good enough. We don't need less access to trauma care. We need more. It's time for Shans UF to stop putting profits ahead of patients. Stop playing political games. Visit SaveOurTraumaCenters.org to find out how you can help keep Ocala's Trauma Center open and protect life-saving trauma care. Save more lives. Save our trauma centers. Paid for by the 60 Plus Association. All right, 25 minutes after 8 o'clock. Let's take a look at the other news, Robin. These are the stories that don't fit anywhere else, so we squeeze them in right here. 
The first story comes to us from Ivy Bridge, England. Ivy Bridge, England. A British woman said she wishes she could reclaim her donated kidney from her allegedly unfaithful husband. Oh. Samantha Lamb is 41 years old. She's from Ivy Bridge, England. She said she and her husband, Andy, 45 years old, married in 2007, and she gave him a kidney a few years later when he became ill and needed a transplant. Lamb said the marriage broke apart a few years later when she suspected he was having an affair with her friend and the other woman admitted to the infidelity. I can't believe he now has a second chance to live to see his grandchildren grow up, Lamb said. (laughs) I would definitely go through the operation again, but I wouldn't give the kidney to him. I hate him. If I could, I'd take it back and give it to someone else. Oh, Can you imagine the judge saying, (laughs) yeah, I think you're right. Let's get it out of it. Yeah. (laughs) Have the girlfriend donate her kidney. We'll replace it. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, oh, my gosh. Let's see. Another story is out of Monza, Italy. Monza. Authorities in Italy say a man posed as a cat lover to adopt more than a dozen cats that he would kill and eat. Oh. Animal welfare organization oh. Ada said the man adopted at least 15 cats over the course of several months from multiple Brianza province shelters in Italy, and oh. raised suspicious um, suspicions among officials when he offered excuses for avoiding routine checks on the welfare of the adopted cats. Oh, gee. He even admitted That's to killing sick. and eating the cats in the company of oh. friends. Oh. Hmm. That makes you want to cry. They're not bad, as long as you put a little ketchup on them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke. It's just a joke. Don't get mad at me. Next story is out of uh, Masoy, Norway. Officials in a municipality in Norway's far north said they are willing to give away a church building free to a group that commits it commits to its maintenance. Oh, Masoy nice. officials said the Ingoya Island Church, built from brick in 1957 following the destruction of the previous church during the World War II campaign. I never heard of a fridge that way. Requires $230,000 in renovations, and the Masoy Parish Council is unable to afford the work. So they want to give it away to somebody who will take care of it. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that nice? Next story is uh, out of Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton uh, animal rescuers in New Jersey say a large dog stranded on the ice of the Delaware River was rescued using a kayak. Oh, Ewing Township Animal Control Officer Richard Hutchinson said he and colleague Mark Phillips responded Sunday afternoon to the river near the Trenton side of the Calhoun Street Bridge on a report of a dog trapped on a frozen section of the water. Oh. He was about 200 yards out, and we were throwing hot dogs to him and whistling, but he wouldn't come, Hutchinson <laughs> said. Hutchinson and said Trenton police and firefighters arrived on the scene and advised rescuers not to go out on the ice. However, shelter volunteer Russ Miller arrived on the scene with a kayak after authorities left, and he and a witness named Ciro Silvestri slid the kayak across the ice to reach the dog. Oh, how nice. 85-pound Mastiff, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and wow. there's a video, if you want to see it, on, on YouTube. Gosh. Of the rescue. A video of the rescue. Thank God. Mm-mm-mm-mm. And uh, the last story is out of Chicago. A naked 26-year-old man. <laughs> Trashed the home of a Chicago couple in their 60s while they were away for the weekend. Oh, <laughs> and he did that naked. Police responded to calls from neighbors who saw through the window a man naked throwing things around. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was arrested. Of course. Oh, All right, let's, let's uh, wrap it up. <laughs> Let's go forward. All right, uh, Mike Huckabee is coming up, and uh, after Mike Huckabee, we have News Bites, and we'll do that in just a bit. This is The Source, WOCA. This is the Huckabee Report for Tuesday. I'm Mike Huckabee from Krakow, Poland. Today, a sneak peek at the State of the Union. That story next. Marsha's identity thief wasn't a stranger. It was her best friend, her roommate. She put Marsha close to $100,000 in debt, and Marsha ended up losing her home. A few years later, it almost happened again, but this time she was armed with the proactive protection of LifeLock Services. 
She again knew the thief trying to steal her identity. It was her son's friend attempting to get a loan in Marsha's name. With LifeLock's help, Marsha was able to stop the fraudulent loan before it could damage her finances and good name. Marsha found out the hard way that no matter how careful we are, no one can stop all identity theft. And that's why I protect myself with LifeLock Ultimate. Don't think identity theft will never happen to you. Do what I did. Arm yourself with LifeLock Ultimate. Visit LifeLock.com now and enter promo code Huckabee or call and mention Huckabee for 10% off your LifeLock membership. Call 1-800-240-LOCK, 1-800-240-LOCK, 1-800-240-LOCK. Network does not cover all transactions and scope may vary. Tonight, President Obama gives his State of the Union speech to Congress. Most analysts expect Obama will likely use it to promote Democratic policies and try to hit the reset button one more time. Or maybe since he's an avid golfer, we should say he'll take yet another mulligan. He's expected to push for immigration reform, gun control, climate change legislation, all things that he's pushed for before and failed to get. Added to the mix will be a pitch for government action to fight the left's latest buzzword, income inequality, and the loss of upward mobility. Even though a new study found that the chances of a U.S. child moving up the economic ladder are about the same as they were in 1986. My question, if refusing to compromise with Congress works, why is he promising the same reforms for the fifth straight year? The dramatic story of Marlise Munoz has come to a sad end. She was 14 weeks pregnant when she fell unconscious. Doctors pronounced her brain dead. Her husband said that he and his wife talked about not wanting to be kept alive artificially, but under Texas law, hospitals can't shut off life-sustaining treatment for patients who are pregnant. The husband finally sued, and his attorneys argued that the baby was distinctly abnormal due to lack of oxygen. Over the weekend, a judge ordered the plug pulled, and the hospital complied. It was a tragic case in every conceivable way. If any good comes out of it, it might be that it forced a lot of people to think about something they prefer not to think about. That when a woman is pregnant, her body represents two lives, not just one. And in this case, her family has lost two members, and it's time to let them grieve in peace. Finally, a California woman has launched a website called She'sAHomeRecord.com. Women are encouraged to log on and attack the women that their husbands cheated with. So far, over 175 have. And some of them go full bore, even lifting photos of the women off of Facebook and identifying them by name. But some of the other women listed on the site say they're innocent or that the husbands told them they were separated. They're afraid of their reputations being ruined or even losing their jobs. As usual, the website creator denies any responsibility. Hey, it's the users posting that stuff. She's just giving them a place to do it. But it's a slippery slope. The founder of a notorious revenge porn site where men posted nude photos of their exes without permission was just indicted on multiple counts. Oh, not for hosting the site, which is now offline, but for allegedly paying a hacker to steal intimate photos from women's computers so he could post them online. The problem is that once you start blurring the line between what's right and wrong, doesn't take long before you've erased it entirely. And this is the Huckabee Report. You take your six-year-old to the playground. You watch her go down the slide, then run over to the swings. Another mother strikes up a conversation. You take your eye off your daughter for just a few seconds. You look back at the swings. And she's gone. Your heart drops into your stomach. You jump up, your eyes searching. You cry out her name. Lily? Lily? From the top of the slide, you hear a voice. Mommy, watch me! Every parent knows that feeling. Imagine if she were actually abducted. Go to wirelessamberalerts.org. Sign up for free Amber Alerts on your cell phone. When an Amber Alert is issued in the areas you've chosen, you'll receive a free text message. If you spot the vehicle, the suspect, or the child described...